Hi, students of Visitation Academy. My name is Tom Fontana. Well, I'm here today to talk about Michelangelo's Pietà. The Pietà is one of the most famous sculptures in the world and considered by many, including me, to be the greatest sculpture ever made. The life-size sculpture, which is about six feet high by six feet wide, shows Mary holding her son, Jesus, after he was brought down from the cross soon after his crucifixion. The word pietà in Italian means pity. Pity is defined as sympathy or kindly sorrow evoked by the suffering, distress, or misfortune of others. Can you see how this statue is intended to make us feel sorrow? Now, before I talk more about the Pietà, let me tell you a quick story about my personal experience with this sculpture. When I was 16 years old, a little older than you guys are now, my two brothers and I backpacked through Europe. They were just 17 and 18 years old. We had many adventures as we made our way through nine countries in six weeks. One of my most memorable experiences was our visit to St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City, in the heart of Rome. Not only is St. Peter's the location where our first Pope, St. Peter, is buried, but it's also the home to countless artistic treasures and masterpieces. By far, my favorite piece was the Pietà. I could have stood in front of it for hours as I explored every curve and fold in Mary's gown, or the muscles and veins in Jesus' hands, arms, and torso. But one feature of the sculpture especially captivated me, and it even puzzled me. It was Mary's face. In fact, when you stop and think for a second, there's something really unusual about her face. Can you figure it out? Let me give you a hint. Doesn't Mary look really young? Maybe as if she's just 18 years old? But if Jesus is believed to have been about 33 years old at the time of his death, Mary would have to be about 51 or 52 years old. And yet Michelangelo carved not even one wrinkle in her face. Why do you think that is? Michelangelo said that he believed that Mary's divine purity would have kept her perfect and protected her from the effects of aging. Some art historians believe that because Michelangelo's own mother died when he was just a young boy, about six years old, he only remembered his mother as a young woman. And it was that memory that influenced his decision to show Mary with a youthful face. Is Michelangelo trying to show the purity of Mary? Or is he trying to revive his own mother? What do you think? I think it might be a combination of both these ideas. And despite holding her deceased son, it seems that Mary isn't expressing too much anguish. Instead, it looks as if she's gazing at her sleeping baby. See how she seems to easily hold up Jesus' upper body with just one hand? In fact, one of the most noted physical features of the sculpture is how Jesus' flesh, just above his armpit, is lifted by Mary's hand, giving the illusion that she is holding up the significant weight of Jesus' limp head and torso. It would be hard for Mary to hold up all that weight, unless, of course, Jesus were just a small baby. And let's look at Jesus' face, too. See how calm it appears, as if Jesus is indeed just sleeping? Some say it even appears as if he's smiling, perhaps because he's pleased by what he's accomplished by his ultimate sacrifice on the cross. And where are the wrinkles on his face? After all, he wasn't a young boy, but as we said earlier, Jesus was 33 years old, and he would have endured much time in the sun during his travels. And something else really important is missing on Jesus' face. Any ideas? Well, wouldn't there be severe cuts and scratches from the crown of thorns Jesus was forced to wear just hours earlier? Instead, his face is unmarked despite the brutality of the Roman soldiers. Some art experts suggest that Michelangelo is noting that Jesus is now entering his divine realm where all blemishes and imperfections are removed. And there are other inconsistencies with the depiction of Jesus as a deceased man and what really would have occurred to his body. Let's look at the veins in Jesus' arms and hands. They are engorged as if there is still blood pulsing through them. This would not have been the case even minutes after his death. And his body appears supple and limp the way it curves over and around Mary's lap. 
but soon after someone dies, their body hardens in a process called rigor mortis. Yet none of these usual effects of dying are occurring to Jesus' body. It is believed that Michelangelo is suggesting that Jesus, figuratively speaking, is just sleeping and will awake in three days on the day of his resurrection. Now, most people who visit St. Peter's and see the statue don't really see or think about these interesting aspects of the sculpture. Instead, they are simply awed and overwhelmed by the artistic beauty of the Pietà and the remarkable skill required to create it. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that remarkable skill of Michelangelo and share a few more interesting facts about him that will help us appreciate the Pietà even more. Michelangelo was born in Italy in 1475. That's 545 years ago, just as the Italian Renaissance was emerging into perhaps the greatest time of human creativity. Michelangelo's father was very upset that one of his five sons wanted to be an artist instead of a banker or a merchant. An artist was considered a lowly profession. But since Michelangelo was so talented, his father allowed him to be an art apprentice. As his talent increased during his teenage years, he was sponsored by the ruling family of Florence, the Medicis. Because Michelangelo had access to almost any resource he wanted, one of his favorite pastimes was to, now I'm not making this up, it was to visit the local morgue. That's where dead bodies were kept until they could be buried. I think I would have rather been playing soccer, but not Michelangelo. He was fascinated by human anatomy, and his close study of the dead bodies in the morgue would later be seen in the incredible muscular details he included in all of his sculptures and paintings. So now that you know a little bit about Michelangelo's early years, it might be a little easier to understand how he became talented at such an early age. Now, as I mentioned earlier, many art historians consider the Pietà to be Michelangelo's greatest sculpture, with his 17-foot-tall sculpture of David a close second. The Pietà almost overnight elevated Michelangelo to the status of a modern-day rock star and the greatest sculptor in the world at that time. Now, how old do you think you would have to be to be considered the best in the world at what you do? 30 years old? 40? Maybe even older? Yet Michelangelo completed the Pietà in 1499, when he was just 24 years old. And he finished it in only one year. It's just remarkable that someone so young, with less than eight years of training and experience, could create such a masterpiece. Don't you agree? Now, it was very important for an artist to consider where and how his or her work would be displayed. Remember, Michelangelo completed the sculpture at the request of a French cardinal. The cardinal said the sculpture would eventually be situated behind an altar in a funeral chapel and would be visible throughout an entire mass. So with this understanding, some have suggested that just as the priest offers up the blessed sacrament, so too in the Pietà does our Blessed Mother offer up the body of Christ. So can you see how the sculpture might echo the presentation of the Eucharist? Also, since Michelangelo knew that the Pietà was in a funeral chapel, can you see how the image of Mary presenting her deceased son would be similar to mourners who presented their deceased loved ones in the funeral chapel? It's also important to remember that it was the French cardinal who requested that Michelangelo sculpt the image of the Pietà. It wasn't Michelangelo's idea. You see, the image of Mary holding Jesus after the crucifixion isn't mentioned in any of the Gospels, but it had been a common Catholic devotional image for at least 200 years. It is also important to remember that during the Renaissance, no painter or sculptor worked on art just for the fun of it. Paints, brushes, marble, and other materials were very expensive. You needed to receive a commission. In other words, you needed to be paid before you can fulfill your artistic passion. While Michelangelo did many pieces for private individuals who paid him well, his biggest patron or client, as we say today, was the Catholic Church. The church, as you might know, would later commission Michelangelo in the early 1500s to work on an interior ceiling project. That's right, the Sistine Chapel. Perhaps we can talk about that work at another time. So almost from the first day it was displayed in Rome, the Pietà earned enormous praise. 
other prominent artists and sculptors came from far and wide to see it, and without exception, they marveled at its beauty, artistic precision, and realism. One of the most famous artists of the day, Giorgio Vasari, called the sculpture a miracle, so natural yet divine. Oftentimes, Michelangelo, who certainly had his share of vanity, would visit the chapel to listen in on what visitors were saying about his masterpiece. Without photography, and especially without Facebook and Instagram back then, Michelangelo didn't have to worry about being recognized. Only his name was famous. On several occasions, Michelangelo became bitterly angry when he overheard people attributing the sculpture to other prominent sculptors of the day and from other provinces instead of Florence. After all, who could believe that this masterpiece was the work of such a young man? So at night, when the chapel was closed, Michelangelo carved his name in a conspicuous location on the sculpture. Have you noticed it yet? Let's take a closer look at that sash across Mary's torso. There, an inscription reads, and I'll translate it, Michelangelo Buonarroti, that's his last name, of Florence, made this. Michelangelo wanted to leave no doubt about who sculpted it and where he was from. He later deeply regretted this show of pride, and despite living another 65 years until he was 89 and completing hundreds of works, Michelangelo never signed another one of his sculptures or paintings. So I hope this brief discussion about the Pietà helps you appreciate Michelangelo's remarkable artistic talent, but also the fact that there is usually a very rich and fascinating story behind every piece of art. I also hope that when you guys can start going to museums again, you'll stand in front of a painting or a sculpture and do more than just admire what you see. I hope you'll ask yourself, what inspired the artist to create this work? What is the artist trying to tell me and why? So thank you for your time and I hope someday you'll be able to see the Pietà in person and be inspired as I was when I was just 16 years old. Thank you.